All right, welcome to the first quality assurance project. And in this one, we're going to be making the um, metric imperial converter. And to get started with this, just open the repository link on GitHub. And you just want to grab this um, clone with HTTPS URL right here. And let's just click new project, uh, import from GitHub, and just paste it into here, and then press OK. And that will start downloading the project into Glitch for us. And um, I'm just going to wait for it quickly just so I can rename it so to something a bit more appropriate. So, um, by the way, the example project is not working at all. So we're pretty much on our own here. So we're going to have to figure it out ourselves. Um, so what I'm just going to do is change this to something like FCC convert or something like that. So because it's a converter. And if I just click share here and then live app and then just copy this, um, this is going to be the home page of our app right here. And that's what we'll be submitting. Um, yeah, it hasn't loaded fully yet. That's why it's not coming up. So what we're going to do now is just um, do some basic setup. So the another thing you have to do is if you look at um, readme.md, it says that you have to set an environment variable called node underscore env to test. So we want to just make sure that we do that as well. Um, it's not really explained what this is for, but I think it's to do with just running some unit or functional tests or something like that. So we just want to set that up right here. And if we just take a look at this now, once it's woken up, um, yeah, it's almost ready. Um, Anyway, um, I'll just talk you through what's going on. So we have um, an index.html page and that just has a form where we can enter in a value. And in this app, we have uh, one root defined in root slash API and it's called API slash convert. And you'll give a, an input as a query to this. And it's basically the input can be in um, miles and it will convert to kilometers. It can be in kilometers and it'll convert to miles kilogram and it'll convert to pounds, pounds and it'll convert to kilogram. And um, the last one I think is it converts between gallon and liters. And you can view all the examples right here. And what this form also does is if you put in um, a number, if you put in a value in here, like 3.1 miles, and then click convert, what will happen is inside here, um, it will basically run this route and then put the JSON response in here. So that's what we'll see. Um, this this is kind of complex because it's split up into so many parts. Um, you can see that all the fields for the response is set from the um, convert handler. So that's in here right here. And this is where we'll be writing our functions to do things like conversion or convert the units or convert the um, values and stuff like that. So we'll be writing all our conversion functions in here. Um, and then I've already looked at roots. Um, FCC testing, don't worry about it. That's a free code camp. Um, in public, it's empty style sheet. And then in tests, you have these unit tests. So what these unit tests do is they test each of the conversion methods that we'll write in the convert handler. So we'll have to fill these in as well. We have to make sure these pass. And also we have this functional test right here. And the functional tests basically um, run, run the testing on the API itself. You can see try HTTP being used here. And this, this basically just does similar things, but actually tests out our API routes. So we're going to have to fill those in as well. Then it, and in views, like I said, there's the form that um, posts to the convert route. Sorry, gets the convert route. So yeah, that's what we'll be doing. So we'll be um, filling in the con um, conversion function and then run writing the test to make them pass as well. So yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do. So um, we're ready to get started with this. So if you just copy this, by the way, and um, there's absolutely zero testing on this project, which is a good thing, I guess, because um, I'm not really too sure since the example isn't working. But now that we've got the project ready, we're ready to get started. All right, so let's look at the first user story now. And what it says is that I will prevent the client from trying to guess um, the MIME type. And this is was covered in the information security course, which is why I decided to do that before these projects. And basically to prevent this um, from happening, you just have to set this X content type options header to no sniff right here. And uh, we can use the helmet no sniff method um, middleware to do this. And if you look at um, server.js, um, Actually, if you look at readme.md, it says that all the security stuff needs to be done in server.js. So if we look at server.js, um, we can see that 
um, Helmet has not actually been declared here. But if we look at package.json, we can see Helmet's been installed. So what we want to do in save.js is we just want to um, require Helmet here as Helmet. So we'll say let Helmet equals require and then just the package name, which is Helmet. So we have Helmet now. And what we want to do is basically mount Helmet's no sniff method um, for all routes. So um, maybe do it after these two. So we can say app.use here, and you can do helmet.nosniff like this, and save that. And that will basically um, um, set this header for every single request and response to make sure that the browser doesn't do any type sniffing. So that should be everything you need for that um, to work. So we can move on to the next one now. So in the second test, what we're going to look at is preventing cross-site scripting attacks. And remember, cross-site scripting is basically putting like um, JavaScript code into the input to execute malicious code, hopefully on our server or something like that. So we want to just prevent that. And, and the way we can do that is by sanitizing the input, which means encoding anything that looks like code in a way where it can't be executed, but the information still gets across. And browsers can do this um, it's themselves if you set this header called xxss protection and we want to just make sure that we set this to one which means it does sanitize it or it does um enable the filtering um again um as far as we're concerned for this version of helmet what we're about to do will enable the header even though this was found to be less secure and um it gets disabled in the later versions for now um since we're using uh, version 3.1.0, just assume that this um, enables that header. So what we want to do for this is just simply use the um, XSS filter from Helmet to do this. So we'll just say app.use and inside it we'll say helmet.xss filter like this. And uh, I'm just going to double check that method. Yep, that's it. So that basically enables this heading for every single request and response to make sure that um, any inputs are sanitized by the browser. And that should be everything we need to pass this test. Okay, so now we're done with the security stuff and we can move on to the third test. And what it says is that when we um, put a get request to the API convert route with a single parameter containing an accepted number and a unit, so that will be something like um, slash API slash convert question mark and an input equals and then an accepted number like this and then an accepted unit to convert like this. And what it says is that they'll have it converted. And um, what we're going to be doing is basically returning a response that looks like this. So we'll have init num, which is the initial number, init unit, which is the initial unit. Then we have return num, which is the converted number. And then we have return unit, which is the converted units. And then we'll finally have a string saying um, the um, basically the conversion. So it's like 3.1 miles converts to uh, 5.00002 kilometers. So that's what we're going to be um, doing in the end. And if we take a look at um, roots and then api.js, we can see that we already have a root setup for convert and it grabs the input um, from the request query. And then we have all of these fields. So we have init unit, init um, num, return num, return unit to string. And what we're going to be doing is just putting those into an object and then JSONing it back right here. And we can see that the calculations um, happen. Um, okay, I don't know what's going on here. We can see that the calculations actually happen um, from the convert handler. So the convert handler has a bunch of methods which are not filled in yet. And that will do the calculations. So I'm just going to give this a quick test now. So it should return an empty object. So if I just put this into here, yeah, we can see that the empty object gets returned, and that's okay because it's bec the reason we have an empty object is because all of these are undefined. And what we're going to do now is we're going to actually set the first two fields since from the input it should be fairly easy to get um, the number like this and then the unit like this. And we're going to be setting the number to the init num and the unit to the init unit. And you can see that we have these um, convert handler functions to do this. And they're both taking the input, which is from the query. And this um, get num needs to return the number, and then get unit needs to return the unit. So if we look at convert handler, we're going to be filling in the get num method first. And um, the weights, 
I found to be easiest to separate between um, these numbers and these units is by using this regex. So I'm just going to steal this um, regular expression from um, Stack Overflow. I'll, I'll obviously link to it in the description. And what I'm just going to say is since we're going to be using this for two methods, I'll just call this input regex. And I'm just going to paste this in here. Oops. I don't think I copied the right part. No, I didn't. I can't even copy and paste, right? Let's put that in here. So what this regex basically does is um, it tries to match either a group of um, characters together or a group of numbers together. And either one will be fine. And if we call this the, the match method on a string and give this regex, what it will do is it will return an array of all the matches. So the first match will contain um, this because it's a group of non-characters, I guess. And the second match will always contain the units because that's a group of characters. If we had a third number in here, then the third input would be that number and so on. So it'll be the groups of numbers or groups of characters and it will put any of those matches into an array. So what we can do here is we can say input dot match and we can give the input regex that we just set up here. And this will create an array and the uh, the first index of the array will have this four and the second index will have this gal right here. And what we can do is just select the first index since this is just getting the number. And then what we can do is just assign this to result like this. And if I refresh this now, um, so if I do slash API slash input is four gal, we can see that init num is now four because the result has been set correctly. And we can do a very similar thing here because remember how I said in the um, second uh, part of the array or the second index or index one, we'll have this gal right here. So we can just do the same thing here. We can just copy this and we can just put the index one into here and that will set the gal like that. So if we refresh this, uh, or if we go back again um, and refresh it, we can see that init unit has also been filled in right there. So that's that done. Now the next thing to do is um, do the testing for this. So for the get num method, or for getting this original input back, we have a functional test that's already been filled in here, but that also tests a few more fields and we'll come back to that in a second. Um, but what we're also going to do is fill in some unit tests. So we already have a unit test for um, getting the number back. We have this, um, this is again done using chai HTTP. No, just chai here, sorry. And what we have is we have an input of 32 liters and it basically checks if the get num method returns 32. And what we're going to do now is test the um, init, we're going to test if the um, get unit method, which is um, this method right here, actually returns the unit, which it should be um, liters for that case. But they've already written out um, a test for this and we just need to fill this in. So we have this input here, which is all the different units we can have. And all we're going to do is test that if we add this um, to a number or something as a unit, we want to get that unit back. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to steal this um, assert equal method here and I'll, I'll obviously I'll show you what, what, what I'm doing. So down here, um, what we want to do is we want to run the get unit method and we want to give it um, and we want to put a number in here. So let's just go with 32 again. And what this will do is for each of them, it'll concatenate them into a string. So it'll say 32 gal, 32 l, 32 my, 32 km. So it will, it will give that as the input. And we just want to make sure that um, we get the original uh, unit box, which is again, this LA, because this LA is um, each element in this array. So that's the unit test for that. And um, let's see that if that's everything. Yeah, that should be everything we need to do. So like I said, if you put um, a number and then a valid unit in here, then press enter, we can see that we have the number back in the init num field and we have the a unit back in the init unit field. So that's basically this um, third test completed. So now we're going to try and complete this fourth test and what it says is that I can convert from gallons to liters and vice versa using this conversion rate right here. So we're basically going to be trying to set um, the return num field and return unit field correctly when we have liters and gallons. 
So the first thing we want to do is set the return num field correctly and we have to convert from um, liters to gallons and we can see that the return num field is set by calling the convert method in the convert handler and it takes in the init num and the init unit so if we gave it um, 32 liters for example it will take in 32 here and then L here as the init unit and we want to make sure we fill that function in so that it converts the 32 into gallons so Let's go over to a convert handler and if we scroll down a little bit um, we, we're going to be filling in this convert function and we can see that we have the conversion rate set up here already and we have this result variable that gets returned so that's what we need to set. So since we're working with um, gallons and liters the first thing we want to check is if the um, liter if the unit is liter if the unit is gallons we'll start off with then we want to convert it to liters and the way we can do that is say if and then init unit and uh, I'm going to say triple equals and then I'll put gal here like this. I'll also put, put an or statement because just in case they decide to use um, capitals as well. So if, if it's either gal in small letters or um, if it's either gal in small letters or gal in large letters, um, we want to make sure that we convert it to liters. And what we can do for that is um, we can say, let's see, since we have this number right here, so this number represents um, one US gallon in liters, um, and we have an input in gallons. If we multiply this by the number of um, liters in a gallon, uh, we can basically convert this into liters. So what we want to do here is we want to say init num, which is our input, uh, multiplied by and then we want to multiply this by this gal to l which is the um, gallons to liters right here so we want to paste that into here and what I'm also going to do is call the to fixed method and give 5 here and that basically just rounds the answer to 5 decimal places because sometimes we can get really long answers and then I'm just gonna set this to result like this so um, if we were to do um, something like for gal, um, we haven't set it up fully, but we, we will see it working soon. So that was basically convert um, from gallons to uh, liters. And then what we want to do is we want to say else if, so we want to check now if the init unit, so the input unit is equal to liters. So that will either be small l or large l. So we want to go with small l here and then large l here. And then what we want to do is we want to set the result to, um, let's think about this. So we want to say result equals. So we'll have an input in liters and this number represents the number of gallons in a liter. So if we were to divide that input by this number, then we will be able to convert it from liters to gallons. So what we want to do here is we want to do um, init num, which is our input, divided by, and then this um, conversion rate right here. And um, the problem with this right here is it does integer division and um, it'll basically return a whole number. So we want to just call the to fix method here and then give five. And that will basically um, convert this um, back in, it'll convert it into a decimal with five decimal places. So that's that. So now the um, convert method should correctly return the um, number of gallons or the number of liters based on what unit was given. So the next thing we want to do now is we want to set the um, re the return unit field and that's um, this one right here and basically we want to either if, it, if the uh, input unit was gallons we want to set this to liters and if the input unit was liters we want to set this to gallons. So if we go up to, I'm just going to copy this again because we're going to be using this again. So if I just copy this and if we go up to um, return unit, get return unit right here. If we if we take in an, in, if an input in gallons, we want to make sure that the return unit is in liters. And if we're taking an input in um, liters, we want to make sure that the return unit is in gallons. So that'll be gal, like this. Um, let's see, there's an error. 
unexpected token. Hmm. Okay, the arrows seem to have gone away, so I don't know what was going on there. So basically, yeah, that's what that does. Um, then we need to write some unit tests for this. So if we look at the unit tests.js, we can see um, right here, they've already written a unit test that tests from gallons to liters. So they'll take in this input, which is five gallons. They have this expected value, which is uh, how many uh, liters five gallons is. And then they use the approximately method and then runs the convert method using the five and the gal and then checks if it's within 0 0.1 tolerance. So we can just steal this and then do the same thing for um, liters to gallons. So let's start off with five liters here. And if we have a look at what five liters should be, so it should be five L liters uh, in gallons. And, and by the way, an important thing is this isn't the right answer because this is a British gallon. So you want to make sure that you um, change this to a uh, US gallon, US liquid gallon like this. So that's what um, five liters should be equal to. So you want to just copy that and you want to just change the expected value to this. And that's basically the unit test for that. So what it does is it gives five, lit five and then liters to the convert handler and it checks if it's if the returned um, value is approximately equal to this. So that's the um, test for the con conversion. And now we just want to do the test for the return unit. So if we go down to um, re to get return unit here, we can see that the test has already been done for us. So what it does is it basically checks um, for each input that we give it if the if it's equal to the same index on the expected array. So it checks that if we give gallons, it returns liters. If we le give liters, it returns gallons. If we give miles, it returns kilometers. Kilometers, miles, pounds, kilograms, kilograms, pounds, like that. So that should be everything uh, we need to do there. Um, so I'm just going to try running this. Um, I'm not sure if it's properly going to work yet. There might be some few bugs or something. Um, no, we can see that it's actually worked surprisingly. So uh, if we give four gallons, we can see the return num field has been set to um, the four gallons and the uh, in liters. And we can see the, the return unit is liters. If I were to change this to something like um, 5L or 5 liters, we can see that um, the return value is that in gallons. And we ha can see that the return unit is indeed in gallons. And that's, yeah, that looks about right. Yeah. So we basically um, completed this uh, fourth test now and we can convert successfully between gallons and liters. Okay, so now we're on to test five now. And test five is basically the same as test four, except it's to allow conversion between pounds, which is this LBS here, and kilograms and vice versa, using this conversion rate. So the first thing we want to do is basically modify our convert method to allow for conversion between pounds and um, kilograms. So I'm just going to copy this and just paste it into here. And so if the input unit is in pounds, so that's LBS, or I'm going to go with capital LBS as well, just to be safe. Uh, we want to make sure that um, we want to multiply the number of pounds by the number of pounds in a kilogram to convert this to kilograms. And the number of pounds in a kilogram is available in this um, variable called LBS to kg. So you just want to replace that with this. And then we just call the to fix method to convert this into five decimal places. So again, this is the conversion rate between pounds and kilograms. And if the in otherwise, if the input is in kilograms, or I'm going to go with capital kg here, we want to basically um, divide the number of kilograms by the number of um, kilograms in a pound to convert this into pounds. So we can just give the pounds to kilograms right here. Um, I could have done it with that um, number, but it's always best to use a variable name like this. And again, it will um, put it into five decimal places. So now in the convert method, um, it should allow conversion between um, pounds and kilograms. But we need to write a unit test for that. So if we go into tests and then unit test.js, 
um, right underneath where we did the liters and, and gallons ones, we want to do the pounds to kilograms ones. So you want to just copy that and in here just paste it there. And what I'm going to start off with is try and convert five pounds to kilograms. So I'll say five pounds and I'll just search it up here. So five pounds in kg and five pounds should be roughly equal to 2.26796 kilograms. So I'm going to set the expected to that. And I'm also going to do the same thing um, for con to test the conversion between kilograms and um, pounds. So I'm going to change the input to five kilograms and five kilograms in pounds is let's have a look I don't I don't use uh, imperial units so I don't really know so five kg in pounds and you can see that's roughly equal to 11 pounds again I think it's just Americans that use these units so you can just paste that into here and um, that should be the unit test for the convert method again all of these are for the convert method so what we also want to do is make sure that we return the units correctly. So we want to also modify the um, get return unit method to allow for conversion between pounds and kilograms. So we can just copy this and paste it into here. And if the input is pounds or pounds and capitals, we want to make sure that the return unit is kilograms. And if the input is in kilograms or capital kilograms, we would just want to make sure that the um, return unit is pounds like this and um, again like we saw in the last challenge the um, test for the unit the the unit test for the get return unit has already been written so we don't have to worry about that so that should be everything for that so if I were to put in something like five pounds into here we can see that the number of five pounds and kilograms gets returned and the return unit is kilograms. And if I were to change this to five kilograms, uh, we can see that it's returned the number five kilograms in pounds and the return unit is pounds. So we can now convert between um, pounds and kilograms, which is user story five completed. So to complete test six, we'll basically be doing the same thing, but except for allow conversion between miles and kilometers. So again, the first thing we want to do is modify our convert method to allow for conversion between miles and kilograms. So I'm just going to copy this and then, um, actually, sorry, wrong method. Um, if we're working with the convert method, so we want to just copy this and paste it into here. And if so, if the input is in miles or capital MI, um, we can see that um, this conversion rate right here shows the number of kilometers in a miles. So if we multiply the number of miles by the number of kilometers in a mile, which is this right here, we can get we can convert this into miles. So we just want to paste that into here. And um, if we start off with kilometers, so if the input is kilometers or um, I'm going to go with capital KM, um, we basically want to, if we have the number of kilometers and we divide it by the number of kilometers in a mile, we'll get it to the number of miles. So we just want to copy this and just paste it into here. And that should do that conversion for us. But again, we need to write um, unit tests for this. So um, we're at um, this part right here. So miles to kilometers. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it into here. So the first thing I'm going to do is try um, converting five miles to kilometers. So I'll put five miles here. And I'll just do something like five miles to km. And I'm going to copy this right here. So that's five miles in kilometers. So that's what the expected value should be. And then again, this test checks, it runs a convert method and checks if the um, value is approximately equal to that. And we also want to write a, a unit test for um, kilometers to miles. So just copy that, just paste that into here. And this time we're going to go with five kilometers. And um, I'm going to say 5km in miles. And 5 kilometers is roughly 3.10 miles. So that's what our um, expected value should be. OK, so now um, the convert method will work for the miles to kilometer conversion. But we also need to make sure that the get return unit method um, converts correctly between uh, miles and kilometers, which is what this test right here. So. Um, just go to convert handlers and um, in get return unit we finally want to set up a case for miles and kilometers so 
if I put that into here. So if the input is in miles or capital MI, so either of these are miles, and we just want to make sure that the, the returned unit is kilometers. And if we were to change this to kilometers or um, capital kilometers, we want to make sure that the return unit is in miles like this. And if we save that now, um, again, the unit test for the um, return unit has already been written, so we don't have to worry about that. So if I put in to here five miles, we can see that um, it's returned as the number of kilometers in five miles and the return unit is kilometers. And if I were to change this to five kilometers, we can see that it's returned the number of miles in five kilometers and the return unit is in miles. So now that we can successfully convert between miles and kilometers, that's um, test six completed. So now we're on test seven now, and what it says is that if my unit of measurement is invalid, then the returned value, um, will, the return response will just be invalid unit like this. And the way we can implement that is in our um, get unit method, we can check if it's a valid unit. And if it's not valid, then we can return an error. And if that's the and if that error is returned, then in our API, we can basically just return an error message. So what I'm going to do is in convert handler.js, remember that the get unit method will take in whatever the number the whatever the units was. So in this case, it'll be um, kilometers. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this array in, but Again, I'll explain it because it would take me a long time to write it out. So um, so we have the results right here, which should be whatever the string was at the end of the number. And I have this array of valid units, and the valid units are the accepted units for the input. So I have gallons, liters, miles, kilometers, and pounds, kilograms, and then the capital versions of those. Then what I'm going to say is if um, valid units um, doesn't include, so includes... So remember, result is the um, string with the unit. So if that if this valid units array doesn't include that, that mean that means it's an invalid unit. So instead of returning the result, we can say return um, invalid unit like this. So what this will do is it will return invalid unit if the um, unit that is specified isn't in this array. And what we want to do is we want to write a unit test for this very quick. So um, in um, let's have a look. I think I forgot which one. All right, so it's in um, unknown in unit input right here. So we want to do a test here for this. So what I'm just going to do is something like, um, let's see, um, there's also already a functional test that I can try with this. Yeah, so I can say let um, input equals, and then I'm going to do 32 grams. And remember, we don't support converting grams. It has to be in kilograms. And then what I'm going to say is, assert dot equal and um, and we want to check if if when if we give the um, input to the get unit method we want to check that the um, result comes back as invalid um, input like this which is what it should do because if we look here if it doesn't if it's not included in this array it should be invalid sorry invalid unit not invalid input so there should be um, invalid unit right here so that's the unit test for that. But there's also a functional test for that that we have to write out. And the functional test, basic, all of them, they use try HTTP and they basically make a request to our um, API convert route. And then they put a query in like this. And what it's, this functional test will do is it will try the query with um, the input value set to 32 grams. So we want to change this input value to 32 grams. And what we want to make sure is that the response body um, right here returns um, invalid units. So we want to say invalid unit. And as of right now, it won't return invalid unit because um, we haven't set that up yet. So the last thing we want to do is in api.js, um, what we want to do here is we want to say um, if, and if we want to say if the um, init num, which is what um, this get num method, sorry, if init unit, which is what the init unit method returns. So if init unit is equal to um, invalid unit, then what we, we just want to do is say res response.json 
And we can just give the init unit because that will just be a string saying invalid unit. Or we can just return invalid unit like this. So if if this um, get unit method did return invalid unit, then we just want to JSON back out invalid unit like this. So if I were to put something into here like 32 grams, we can see that invalid unit right here gets returned. So if this um, unit right here isn't in this um, array of accepted units that we set up in convert handler, it'll come back with invalid unit. And that should be um, this test completed now. So test eight is quite similar to test seven, but what it says is that if the number you give it, so that'll be um, whatever like um, came before the characters or the units, if the number you give it is invalid, then what it should do is it should return invalid number. So if this number right here was invalid, it would return invalid number. An example of an invalid number is if we look at functional test.js, it'll be something like this, because this is a double fraction, which is not allowed. So that will that should return an invalid number. And the way we can figure the place that we can figure out if a number is invalid is when we set the init num and we run the get num method with the input, uh, we can figure out right there if a number is valid or not. And uh, remember that in the get num method, what we'll do is we'll use this regex and whatever this is in array zero, it'll in the index zero, it'll be whatever came before the first character in this input. So in this case, it'll be the number or whatever came before the units and we'll assign this to results. So this result is the number right there. And what we can do is we can say if is NAN, so if is not a number, so this is a vanilla JavaScript method and we can give this as giving the give this a variable. And this will return true if this variable is not a number. And that's how we can validate whether this is a number or not. And if this is not a number, what we just want to do is instead of returning result, we just want to return um invalid number like this. Okay, so that so the convert the um isn't get num method should now return invalid number if if it doesn't re receive a proper number and we need to write a unit test for this. So if we look at um invalid input double fraction here, what we want to do is um yeah we just want to um try setting an input like so let's do it like this. So if I copy this this one right here. Um, oh no, I have no idea what happened there. Okay, so let's copy this one and, um, and paste it into here. And uh, instead of the input being 32 liters, what I'm gonna do is just call, borrow the example from here of what's considered an invalid number. So if we put a double fraction in like this, so this should be an invalid number. And what we want to do is if we do get num with input, instead of it equaling 32, we want to check that it equals invalid number like this. And so what we essentially do is give this input to the get num method and check that it returns an um, invalid number. And I've just realized I forgot to do something here. Yeah, um, I'm supposed to call the done method after all of these tests to make sure that they it can move on to the next one. All right, so the get num method will return invalid number, but um, our um, app won't return it yet because we haven't set something up on the root to do that. So what we want to do is before we do the invalid unit, we want to do um, if, and then remember the get num will return an invalid number. So it'll be assigned to this init num here. So we want to say if init num um, is equal to invalid number, then um, instead of uh, JSONing the object back, we just want to JSON back um, invalid number. So in here, just change in invalid unit to invalid number. So if the get num method returned invalid number after the validation, then um, we want to make sure that invalid number gets returned right here. And we also need to make sure that we write a functional test for this. And they've already started it out here. So what we want to do is we want to make another request. Oh, I forgot to call the done method here as well. So we want to make a request and we want to make a request with this input right here. And again, this is the example of an invalid number. Note that the unit kilograms is valid, but the number, which is the double fraction here, is invalid. And we want to make sure that um, the response body returns invalid number here. And if we save that now, and then I put this, I just copy this, um, hang on, sorry I changed the wrong one, that should be, 
invalid number. So if I just copy this right here and try putting that input in to our app request, we can see that invalid number right here has been returned. So if whatever is below the first character or below the unit is not considered a proper number by JavaScript, it will return this invalid number right here. So that should be test eight completed. So test nine is going to com combine the work that we did for test seven and eight. What it says is that if um, the number is invalid and the unit is invalid, then it should return invalid number and unit. And we don't have to do any work in the um, convert handler for this. Um, all we have to do is make a combination in um, API. So what we want to do is before we check for um, the init num and the init unit returning errors, what we want to do is we can put both of these tests together. So we can say if the init num gave invalid number and the init unit gave an invalid unit, Then what we can do here is say um, response.json and we can give invalid number and unit like this. And that should be that completed right there, but we still have to do um, a functional test for this. So they have this um, input right here, which is, um, it's used a double fraction here and then an invalid unit as well called kilomegagram or something, I don't know. So it's clear, yeah, it's clearly not a valid unit. So what we wanna do is just do um, a test here. And for the input, we wanna give this input right here. So that um, in here. And what we wanna do is test that the root returns invalid number and unit like this. And if we try um, running this with that value right here, we can see that invalid number and unit gets returned. So as long as you have an invalid number here and then some invalid unit as well, we can see that it always returns invalid number and unit. And that should be test nine completed. No unit test for that, just make sure you do the functional test right there. So now we're going to tackle um, test uh, 10 here, I think. Um, let me just check. Yeah, we're on test 10. So what it says is that I can use fractions, decimals, or both in my parameters. So we can use something like one over two or a half. We can do 2.5 over six, so that's a decimal. So we can do all of those. And um, if we take a look at this right now, um, if we do something like 353.43 uh, miles, we can see that it, it already works with decimals, so we don't have to worry about that. So the first thing we're gonna tackle is the fractions and decimals part. And the second thing we're gonna tackle is if the nothing is provided, it will default to one part. And the way we can do fractions is I'm gonna copy and paste a bit of code here and then I'll explain what it does. So remember that in the, um, what we're essentially gonna do is if we have a fraction input, we're gonna be make sure, making sure to convert that into a decimal first because we know it works with decimals. So we wanna make sure we convert all fraction inputs to a decimal. So what I'm gonna do is um, do test check here. So what I'm gonna say is if we convert that result into a string, um, it should already be a string, but I'm gonna double check it, and it includes a slash, um, then we know it's a fraction because we know fractions will include um, a slash like this. So we know it's a fraction then. And then what I can do is um, I can, again, convert it to string just in case. And then I can call the split method with this um, slash right here. And what this will do is it will return an array and splitting the string at the slash. So if we had something like one over two, um, the first index of the array will have one and the second index will have two. If we have something like 2.5 over six, the first index will have 2.5 and the second index will have six. So we've basically converted it into, um, so the, the, the first index will contain the numerator of the fraction and the second index will contain the de denominator or whatever is at the bottom. And another thing I've done here is that if we just have one slash here, like a fraction, um, the length of the values array, which um, is where the split goes, should be exactly two. If it's greater than two, um, it means that it's a double fraction and we don't allow double fractions. So if this is not equal to two, what I've just said is just straight up, just return invalid number right here because they're trying to use a double fraction. 
And then what I've done is for value zero, which is the numerator or whatever is on top, I've just passed it into a float. And I've done the same for the denominator or whatever is on the bottom. So now we have value zero, which is a float representing the top of the fraction or a decimal. And then we have values one, which is a float representing the bottom of the fraction. And what I've just done here is I've just done result equals and then what I've done here is I've basically done value zero over values one and I've done so I've done that division and then I've called it to fix method to make sure that we get a decimal rather than a whole number and I've done that to five decimal places and then I've just called the pass float again just to make sure that we pass it back to a float just in case so that should basically convert whatever the if the result was a fraction and it included a slash it will basically convert that result into a decimal and then we know that it will work okay with the decimal but we're not done here yet um, we have to actually write some uh, unit tests for this so in unit test.js we're going to be writing a test for a decimal input right here and um, let's copy this and paste it into here and what we're going to do is when we call the get num method so we're going to give a decimal input here so let's do something like 3.25 miles or something like that and what we're going to do is check that the get num method um, passes it properly or um, yeah we're gonna check that it passes it properly so all we're gonna do here is just basically check if the get num returns 3.25 like this so that's that now we're gonna do a test for a fractional input so I'm gonna copy this again and paste it. Um, again, we are only checking the get num because once get num is converted it correctly, um, we know it should be okay because all our code that we just wrote wasn't get num. And what I'm going to do for the fraction is I'm going to say something like let the input equals let's say 12 over 8. Um, so if I put this as something as 12.8, we know that the get num should convert this into a decimal. So if I do something like 12 divided by 8, we know that this should be equal to 1.5. So that's what we want to test this against. The final thing that we want to do a test for is um, when something contains both um, a decimal and a fraction. So um, what we can do for that is do something like 27 over 5.4. So if I just do 27 here, and then this bottom part right here is a fraction. So I have 5.4. This So again, this has a decimal and a fraction. And if we do 27, divided by 5.4, that should be equal to 5. So we want to make sure that um, the get num method will convert this into a decimal, which is 5.000 or 5. In this. The second part says that if nothing is provided, it will default to 1. So what we can do here is we can create a new regex here. So we'll say let um, num regex. And this number regex, um, again, I'm going to link this in the description it'll be in the written guide all it does is it basically checks if if it's a number and what we can do is we can do um a test we can call a test method on the regex and give it the result and check that the result is definitely a number and um i'm going to call this number regex so if this if there is if this fails so if this returns false then we just want to set the result to one so again i know it's a bit complex so i'll walk through it again um, this reg, this input regex right here will either match a group of characters together or a group of non-characters together. And if we had something like um, four gallons, um, this this would be zero in the matching or in the match array. This would be zero and this would be one. But if we just had something like kilograms or gals or something like that, this would Im immediately go into zero. So what we want to do is if if um, if we run this test with this regex um, which checks for a number with result and remember result is whatever was at index zero and this fails so this means it wasn't a number and that if that was the case it meant we didn't provide a unit here and we just get, and it just got this right here then what we want to do is just set the result to one and this would cause another problem in the get unit method because remember that I said this will go into index zero if there's not a number here. So basically um in the get unit method remember that we set the result to um the first index of the array and this will be undefined because this has gone into index zero and there's nothing left so the index one will be undefined so what we want to do here is say if a result is undefined so if i put a, if exclamation mark result then what we want to do is 
um, set result to back to index zero. So again, um, I, it's a bit complicated, so I'll try and explain it again. Um, it's really the best I could come up with here. So um, if this, if we just had this, the first match or index zero would be kilograms and index one would be undefined. And if that's the case, then what we want to do is set this result back to index zero because index zero now contains our unit. And uh, we have to write unit tests for this again. So if we go to no numerical input, and uh, what we want to do here is copy this, and we want to check that the, um, if we do just an input like this, kilograms like this, we want to check that if we do get num with this input, um, that returns um, one, because we want to make sure that it will default to one. Um, another test that we can quickly do here is check that the get unit returns a kilogram. So if I do get unit here, we can check that this returns um, kilograms like this. So that's the unit test for that. Um, let me just check if there's a functional test. Yeah, so there's a functional test as well that we have to do. So that's um, if we go down to here, convert kilograms, no number. So this is essentially the same thing that we're doing, but instead um, we're running this on our API instead. And what we want to do here is we want to give the input as just kilogram, like they said here. So it should just be just kilogram like this. You can check that the um, the get num, if we do the init num, we want to make sure that that's um, been established as one. So what we want to do here is say init num is one. So because we want to check that it automatically um, converts it to one. Um, yeah, that should be worse. There we go. Um, yeah. So another thing we can probably check is that the um, unit, so the init unit is equal to kilogram. So we'll say init unit and we can put kg in here. So again, what this does is it gives just a regular kilogram with no unit in here. And what it checks is it that, it, that the um, init num has been defaulted to one and the init unit is still a kilogram. So if we were to run this method now with this root, which is just a unit with no number, um, yeah, we can see that it, the init num has been set to one, so it's been defaulted to one, and the unit is kilograms. And yeah, that should be um, this test completed. It, again, it was really complicated, so if you need me to explain anything, just put a comment in and I'll try my best. So now we're on to test 11, and what it says is that my return will con consist of init num, init unit, return num, return unit. And we have um, those four right here, but it also says that it has a string um, spelling out the units in format. So that would be something like, if we go to the home page, we can see that it says that um, 3.1, and then instead of m, i, it says miles here, converts to, and then... Um, the number of kilometers and it actually says kilometers here rather than km. So even though this is km, this spells it out fully. So we're gonna need to set this string to something like this. And remember that in our API route, um, we set the string field to um, this to string right here. And this to string calls the get string method to do this. And uh, if we go into convert handler.js and we look at the to string method, um, we can see that we need to fill that out and that that just returns as a result right here. But um, another thing that I'm going to fill out is we have this method called spell out unit. And what spell out unit does is it takes one of these units like um, kg, mi, it takes a short form of the unit and it basically returns the long form of the unit. And this is very um, easy to do. It's just a very long process. So I'm just gonna do this using a switch statement and I'm not gonna make you um, sit and watch me do it. Um, so that's that's it right there. So what it does is it basically um, changes the result based on the unit. So if it's um, gal, it'll change it to gallons, liters, liters, pounds, pounds, um, kg, kilograms, miles, and um, miles, km, kilometers, like that. So it basically returns the full form of whatever unit it took in right here. What we want to do is basically return a string in this format. So it'll say the number, space, and then the spelled out unit, and then converts to, and then the and second number, and then the spelled out units. 
And again, I'm just going to copy um, the string that I wrote earlier because it would take a long time for me to type it out. So I'm just going to copy this right here. And in here, we have this result right here. So we just want to set this, the result to this. So what it does is it sets the result to the init num that it took in. Then it runs a spell out unit method with given the init units. So I'll take the long form of that. Then it says converts to, and then it puts the return num in here then a space, and then finally it runs a spell out method again and gives a return unit this time. So we get the full form of the return unit. And then it just returns the uh, result. So yeah, that's that. So now we, what we want to do is we have a unit test to complete for the spell out unit. So we want to do that first. So um, where are we at? spell out unit so yeah there we go so we have it right here and again I'm gonna copy and paste this because it's so it took me ages to write this out before so I'm gonna just do this um, myself and then I'll, I'll, I'll obviously explain what's happened but I don't want to just make you sit through this while I'm typing this out so uh, what this does is we have this input which is an array of um, the short forms and then we have um, this is so annoying. Um, then I'm going to format it here. So we have the input, which is the short forms. And then, oh, and I've lost it now. I'm not having a great time with this. And then we have the expected, which is the long form. So what it does is for each of these inputs, it basically checks that um, they match the same index in the expected array after the spell out method is called for them. So it checks if um, spell out method with gal returns gallons l returns liters, my returns miles, km returns kilometers, um, pounds returns pounds, and then kg returns kilograms. So that's that. And we also have to do... Um, all right, no, that's fine. Thankfully, there's no unit test for these strings, so we're okay on that aspect. So if I put, um, if I put this in right here and paste this, we can see that now we finally have a string field and it, what it says is that we have the full string here. So we have four and then the input unit in a long format converts to and then the um, return number and then the return unit in a long format. So that should be um, test 11 completed now. So if we look at the test 12 now, and what it says is that all 16 unit tests should be complete and passing. So the way we can check these unit tests is, um, I haven't figured out a way that we can actually run them, but if you uh, open the logs right here, you can see that the unit test gets printed out right here. And if you ever want to start it, just open the terminal and then run refresh. And um, we'll wait for the test to happen. But I have a bunch of errors on it. And most of these errors right here, um, it's usually due to do with the conversions. And what it says is that it expected whatever the result was to be a number. So I have a feeling this is because um, these numbers right here are being returned as a string. So what I'm just going to do here is in the uh, conversion method, um, which was right here, this one, this one's the one that's throwing all the errors. And I have a feeling it's because I'm calling the to fixed method. And what that does is it maybe changes it into a string or something. I'll turn a string. Yeah, it converts a number into a string. So there you go. No wonder why it wasn't working. So what I'm just going to do here is run the pass float method, which is a vanilla JavaScript method on the result. Let's hope. Yeah, we can see that all the tests have passed. So yeah, it was basically that. Um, you can see that if you look at the unit tests, we can see that all of them have a tick, which means they're passed. Um, if they're not passing, just check, look at the test, try and maybe test it yourself. Make sure that you're running the done function after each test. That should be all right. And if we look at user story 13, now what it says is that all the functional tests are complete and passing. And again, if you look here, I can see that all the functional tests have passed. So what I'm going to do now is just add some styling because right now it looks a bit crap. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and come back.
Okay, so what I've just done is I've added some styling to it, changed some of the colors. And what I've just done is I've just made it as simple as possible. So we just have an input here and then the convert button. And it still works as normal. So you can just put something like 3.1 miles in. And what we have is we have the string printed right here saying 3.1 miles converts to this. And that's basically the string field right here. And we also have the JSON response should we need it. Um, again, you can run the API route manually through the address bar as well. Um, it should still work with um, fractions and decimals. So if I do something like um, this, and then I convert that, we can see that it converts fine. Um, everything works. You can then just enter your unit right here and press convert and you get this. So yeah, that's basically the metric imperial converter um, project completed. Again, there was no tests or anything, but um, yeah, we've learned how to do it properly and how to do use unit testing. So you can go ahead and submit that and then you can move on to the next project.